Mr. President, I'm planning to bring three amendments to this set of appropriation bills that are coming. As we're quickly reading through it and going through the details and the information on the six different sections of our federal funding, which is incredibly important that we actually get done, there are many amendments that are here and many questions that have been raised. I'm raising a couple of them on two different issues. The first of them is a very specific issue. It's been a challenge for us on dealing with an entity called special interest aliens. It's a term you and I know, but many other people around the country do not know. A special interest alien is an actual designation the Department of Homeland Security places on an individual when they cross the border based on where they were traveling from, maybe their connections there of areas of known terrorism, their travel patterns. The definition from the Department of Homeland Security is a special interest alien is a non-U.S. person who, based on an analysis of travel patterns, potentially poses a national security risk to the United States or its interests. So just to be clear, when they're labeled special interest aliens, the Department of Homeland Security is declaring this person potentially a national security risk to the United States. When that individual is encountered at our southern border, we've asked many questions, both of FBI and DHS, what happens next? In the past five months, we've had 58 individuals that were on our terror watch list. Those individuals on our terror watch list, we know who they are, they've been identified, they were detained. We cannot get an exact number of the number of special interest aliens. These are individuals we know have terror links or come from area where there's known terrorism or are traveling in a travel pattern that we know other terrorists have traveled on. So we know that much about them, but we don't know anything else about them. We've asked the simple question, are they detained? The answer so far has been not all of them. When someone at the southern border is declared a national security risk, we think it's reasonable to have that person detained at our southern border. In the past several days, we've had almost 7,000 people a day illegally crossing our border. We don't know how many of those were labeled a national security risk, but we do believe the number in the past few months has been in the thousands. But DHS has yet to give us the exact number. We have potentially in the thousands of people that have been declared by this administration as a potential national security risk, and they cannot tell us if they have been detained their whereabouts for all of them, how they determined that they were a national security risk, or what happens next. So the amendment I'm bringing is very simple. The amendment I'm bringing is to say, we do not allow funding to be used to release people that have been designated a potential national security risk to have them released into the United States. So we don't have a situation where we have individuals identified at the border as a potential national security risk, and then they were just released on their own recognizance for a future hearing. That needs to be fixed. I wish it was fixed today, but it's not. It is an issue. This is an issue that I have raised for a year now, both with DHS, with FBI, Recently met with ICE in a hearing, and when I met with some of the leadership from ICE, I asked them about this on the detention, and this was the response I got from ICE, current administration. It's accurate that we're not tracking special interest aliens on a day-to-day -day basis, not the totality of them. Some are probably on alternatives to detention where we have more tracking on, but we're not tracking all of them. Even those that are on alternatives to detention means they have been released into the country, given a GPS device to turn themselves in later. After at the border, they were declared a potential national security risk. To this body, I would challenge us to say, what would it take for us to detain those individuals and to make sure that we're not releasing people into the country that we recognize literally at the border are a national security risk. That's why I'm bringing this amendment 
to this bill to say this is a common sense approach to be able to deal with a very pragmatic national security risk. A second set of amendments that I'm bringing actually deals with two earmarks. Now, there's lots of earmarks in this bill, and we can have our own debate on earmarks in this body. I don't actually request earmarks on it. I want competitive grants. I want to make sure we're focused on the highest national security priorities and the national priorities that we have, and we have many. My state has several. Many of your states do as well. We should compete for those to be able to make sure that we're reaching the, the highest priorities. But I do understand there are some in this body that disagree with me on that. I disagree with some of the earmarks that are in this, and I see differences of opinion on some that are here. Some deal, though, with military bases and certain construction, totally understandable. Some deal with schools and certain construction, totally understandable. Some deal with a couple of issues that I just have a difference of opinion that's pretty strong. Two of them deal with hospitals. Two of these earmarks deal with a hospital. One of them is Dartmouth Hitchcock Hospital in uh, New Hampshire, and the other one is Women and Infants Hospital in Rhode Island. What would be unique about those hospitals? Well, this is about two and a half million dollars in earmarks between the two of them. These two hospitals actually do late-term abortions. They're different than other hospitals that are on the earmark list. In fact, not only do these two hospitals actually do late-term abortions, they actually advertise that they do late-term abortions and put the word out. They make statements about that they are, let me see if I can pull this out. They, they make statements that they have not only supported late-term abortions up to 22 weeks, but they are ready to be able to do that. They, as they one says, routinely provide abortions up to 22 weeks. 22 weeks, we're pushing five months of pregnancy. We have children that are alive today that were born premature at 21 weeks. But they're alive today because they were able to get the care when they had a premature delivery at 21 weeks. To make it clear what we're actually up against and what this looks like compared to other countries and locations, Spain does not allow abortion after 14 weeks. It's not legal because the country of Spain considers late-term abortion after 14 weeks. Germany restricts abortion after 12 weeks. Italy restricts abortion after 12 weeks. 22 weeks is a late-term abortion. Most locations do not do that. We have a lot of differences in opinion on this issue of life and the value of every single child. I understand that. We've had respectful dialogue in this chamber multiple times on this issue as I've brought this up. But at 22 weeks, there is no question that a child feels pain in the womb. There's no question that at 22 weeks, all science shows that a baby in the womb can recognize its own mom's voice and will jump in the womb when there's a loud sound. At 22 weeks, a baby even already has developed taste buds. 22 weeks is a late-term abortion. And two of these hospitals that have designated earmarks perform this. And I have an objection to that. And I think we as a body should talk about not just our standard for this, what does that mean? Can I just say it as simple as this? Even under the standard of Roe v. Wade that the Supreme Court has now turned back to the states in this body after the Dobbs decision, even under the standard of Roe v. Wade, 22 weeks is past the time that would be recognized as a child as viable based on previous experience with other children that had been born even before that and have su survived and thrived. We as a body should recognize that. And I do object to those earmarks and think that's the wrong direction for federal dollars to be used to be able to supply a hospital with dollars that are performing this type of, of late-term abortions. So I object to those two and we'll continue to be able to speak out on behalf of every child and the value of every child and their life in the days ahead. So, we as a decision, we have a decision to make as a body. Are we going to 
stop the release of special interest aliens who have been designated by this administration to be a potential national security risk? And are we going to use federal dollars to actually provide for late-term abortions through this bill? We will decide that tomorrow. With that, I yield the floor.